ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, I had, well, I sent a fast forward to where he was discussing uh, lambda equals h over mv. Well, that's really de Broglie's work. In fact, it's called de Broglie wavelength. And even more Im overall important is that de Broglie put it forward not only for light waves, but for matter waves. That's highly important. Now, then Einstein returns to pre-1905. 1905 is where I and others say that he plagiarized others' work and ideas. Uh, to take a view of the growing number of scientists, he took this view now, the growing number of scientists who doubt a ether exists, as appears proven by the michelson morley failure, meaning no a ether was detectable in their precise experiment. Now, Einstein conjunctively rejects space as a fixed system of framework, absolutely at rest. Understand what Einstein has just done by being with the correct scientists who have decided that there is no a ether. He now appears to be quoting one or more of the vast ideas he has read and heard, and that is, if there's no a ether, then there's no uh, uh, absolute uh, reference frame at rest. Uh, now, namely, space is not a fixed system or framework absolutely at rest. He does not tell us what space is. He says this is what space isn't, but he doesn't say, I define space to be. Now, uh, then he immediately says that because of the Michelson Morley experiment, it demonstrated that light is unaffected by the motion of the earth. Now, I put I have an uh, objection here. If you just take a ball and you throw the ball out into space and there's no exterior force acting on that ball, the ball keeps the same velocity until it is acted upon by an exterior force. That's Galileo's a law of inertia. Now, what he says is that the what what be with light it's unaffected uh by Galileo's law and uh concerning the universal law the uh, addition of component velocities that's what he's go going to tell us uh now, the velocity of light is a constant. Well, yeah. Regardless of the motion of any system anywhere. Well, regardless of any motion of any system anywhere, if I throw a ball into space and no force acts on it, it'll continue in that direction at that same velocity, regardless of uh, any system anywhere. Therefore, the laws of nature are the same for all uniformly moving systems. Well, that's what Galileo said. You take two inclined planes and he rolled two balls down the inclined planes and they would, they would accelerate at the same, uh, at the same velocity at, for the, at the same time. Uh, no. He says, this is the essence, this, where, they, uh, uh, where you have uniform moving systems. This is the essence of the special theory of relativity. It incorporates, notice this, the Galilean relativity principle. What did I just say? No, which, which states that mechanical laws are the same for all uniformly moving systems. Now, what, yeah, in a, either by trick or accident, it's double talk by Einstein. 
because Galileo in his years of experiments always considered the velocity of light a constant. He never said it was a variable. He always went with the fact of trying to find out what this constant velocity was. He considers it a constant. Uh, Olas Romer, in his years of studying light and its velocity, and the six months he constantly recorded uh, the light from Jupiter and its moon, Eo, and so forth. He always went by the fact it was at a constant velocity. And he obtained then the velocity of light using Galileo's uh, V equals D over T. He used C for light. Uh, C equals D over T. And he obtained 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. He considers light constant from Jupiter and its moons all during his, that six months of observation. Now, we go again per Galileo, when something is in motion, remains in motion at that velocity unless acted upon by an exterior force. Therefore, Galileo's V equals D over T holds true for all motion unless in the medium it is in, that medium is in motion. Do you understand what I mean by Einstein? either doesn't know what he's talking about, but he had to know something about what he was talking about and tried to use that without any references to like put it forward, like it's his work and ideas so he could get a position as a teacher at a university. That is, I think, the absolute truth. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is that I, I have only maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15, and uh, oh, I have some more towards 10 minutes. And uh, I want to also mention now, there, oh, here is, you know, in the England, England practically like had uh, ruled uh, the, the seas in the world. So uh, they put forward like they're the best. This Newton was a made scientist. He's a Southmore. There's no school because of the plague. He's sitting under the tree trying to do some studying, and an apple falls on his head. Fine. Now, overnight, they take this young man, and he knows now what all the scientists know of Europe. How? Because all nations have expert info extractors. They get information, and then each country wants to have their politician, their scientist, the best. So they give him this info, and he's a brash young man. And then it can't be the, the scientists that the other scientists know. It's this brash young man. See, coming up with this, these ideas. And why? It's representing Galileo's laws, Galileo's work. The only thing is, was a little newer mathematics. And that mathematics then was a big argument because the only one they knew was that of, the, of, of calculus that was beginning at that time. And that calculus used like uh, uh, the uh, Roman numeral uh, two, uh, one, two, and so, while really it was, I think, uh, Gauss uh, who, who put in the, the, the symbols we now use. But I say Einstein, uh, Newton thought about it at the same time. I don't think so. I think they had this book ready to print, and it was in perfect Latin. And I have experts who say he, no way he could have wrote that book because he was not that fluent in Latin. Do you understand how they do it? What's the real truth? So now we get where um, I think maybe this is part one, but I want to mention that uh, in this now, Newton is not mentioned. Galileo's mentioned. Uh, then we have where uh, Galilean relativity principle is mentioned. And then I want to mention Poincare. Poincare wrote and presented relativity years before Einstein. Relative motion, and he titled it relativity. Okay, that's one of the reasons I want to get this completed so we get to comparing their equations. Now, uh, I think I'll continue with a part two.